question? Uh -huh. Is it like here or is it here? Well, you know, uh, because a suspension kick is uh, hard to tell because the direction is a diagonal. Okay. So if we sing in a straight direction, straight direction, like when we kick, so one is a straight, the other is about back corner. Because it's almost in line with your leg. Uh, the background is it's almost like. Yeah, front is with, with the front right. leg. Okay. The, the back is about. 135 degree. Oh, okay. So which is you open as much you can, but you can keep you have to keep your chest sink. Okay. So don't over open it and raise up your chest. Okay. Yeah, the kicking movement, uh, our arm movements are very simple and also. Uh, what you did? I want you to think about you know, uh, club hands. Similar, right? So, pretty much similar. Uh, only difference is a cold hands is exactly up and down. This one, a little bit include the sideway, you know, open, and a slightly up curve, go down. And the ending posture, you need a, about shoulder level, uh, arms open. So don't open too small, open big enough. Okay. And uh, here we did two kicks. One we call submission kick, one we call uh, heel kick. Uh, what's the difference between two kicks? So one is with the soft part of the top of the foot and the other is with the heel. Uh, that's right. The, the energy point, one is more in top of the foot. Uh, the other one is in the heel of the uh, you know, foot. Uh, the energy point is different. And uh, uh, what's different for you using those two kicks? That's right. So the separation kick, generally you can see uh, our footwork, we want you to step to the diagonal because its opponent's distance is getting close to you. Uh, it's not enough for you to do the kick, uh, you know, uh, for the leg exactly, uh, how to say, when you do the kick, you bend, you cannot kick. You have to extend, right? But if the distance is not for you to extend, then this kick will not work. So that's the reason. Our submission kick, we ask you to stop in diagonal, and from diagonal the position to do the kick. So uh, that's why our footwork is kind of diagonal. You cannot make it straight forward. Okay. So uh, heel kick, basically you have enough space between you and the opponent, and uh, you use heel as an energy point, and uh, the kick. Uh, well, more like what? <laughs> Stump kick. Actually, when we are uh, exercise, I want you to relax your leg. Actually, I do want you to use heel to kick. Okay, uh, to kick, then you relax. Use heel. So, which is more like <laughs> stung, uh, stung to your opponent. So, this is strong kick. And uh, we don't ask you how high you're going to kick. Which is, uh, you do uh, uh, whatever comfortable for you. Uh, you can keep up, uh, you can keep also low, uh, you know, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, keep low, you have imagination, you're always kicking to your opponent's knee and to break your opponent's leg. Uh, up, you know, you can keep their stomach, uh, you know. Top, you know, you can even use a heel to keeping their, how to say, kicking their chin. Uh, so, uh, you can imagination by different points of the kick, there is no mistake for you to kick in which level, okay? And uh, the only things is before we do kick, we have one standard shape you need to be careful, which is picking up your leg. I want your upper leg at least flat. If you are not reached to the flat, that's going to be a mistake, okay? So generally, we ask your leg not only flat, we ask you a little bit over flat, and your foreleg need to turn in, toe point down. 
So that shape you need to make it clear. And when you're kicking out, then this is not a problem. We don't talk about how high you're going to kick. Okay. And uh, when you make the standing with one leg movement, uh, what do you feel? You feel hard to control balance, right? Do you have any idea how you can make your balance stable? Sink down. Uh, chi sinking down, this is one point from an internal feeling. Uh, that's right, the weight, don't put too much on the heel. Put too much on the heel, it's hard to control it. Put weight more into the bubbling well, then you know you will be more feel stable to rooting it. What else? Uh, that's right. This is a very good point. Uh, I believe you didn't practice ballet, right? But uh, you see ballet, right? Look at the ballet actor. They always, you know, head, they have very good principle from Tai Chi. They head up. Then, you know, when you're head up, Actually, they helping your spirit up. You can focus it clear. So we don't want your head moving around. You know, when your head moving around, you don't fix your mind. If your mind don't fix, your chi is not stable. Then when you turn, it's not very easy to control the balance. So that's the, uh, also the point. Head up, focusing clear. Okay, and uh, the other things. You want the chi sinking down. Uh, you want to wait put it in the right place. You want focusing clear. Still sometimes it's not enough. You know, if I relax my waist, it unifies my body more. Otherwise, I get off balance. That's right. Which is, uh, you cannot stiff your muscle. If your muscle stiffed, then you know you right away, you know, feel it's not very uh, stable. So the muscles need to be relaxed, okay, as much, not use the stiffness, then you will be easy to control, balance, okay. So, uh, separation kick, uh, we know we kicking to the side. Uh, we know the horizontal circle means you catch your opponent and uh, separate your opponent and you break your opponent's upper body, I mean arms, okay, you twist, break their arm. Then you from here gave them a kick. And when we kick, we see energy point, it's the top of your foot. But when you practice, I don't want you to practice lean to side. Actually, your still is just a normal uh, kicking. Okay, so this is about the uh, separation kick. How should we do it? And uh, always remember front arm, front leg are in one line. Okay, so 10 body left heel kick. We've been talked a little bit already about the turning. And uh, you know the turning. Uh, this time, we turning use where? Use heel or use ball? We use a heel turn, right? And generally, we have an idea is if you after turn, you don't shift your weight. You don't change empty leg for leg you use heel as a turning point. And generally, if you after turn, your empty leg, fall leg switched, we use a ball as the turning point. Okay, so this is the difference. And when you are turning, I want you to pay attention. I don't want you to, you know, raising up too much, to make your center up and down too much. This turn just follow waist turning and the swing. Uh, don't make, you know, up and down too much. Uh, only when you are turning, sitting down, you can make your center go down. But uh, don't jump, okay? So this is about the turning. And some people, I think your left leg, easy uh, to close in too early, you know. I would like your leg keep open to swing, swing, swing. Swing will help your balance also. Okay, all the way to the end, you bend your foreleg. Okay, and the heel kick uh, in here, 
we always doing heel kick is, uh, you know, your toe direction is uh, straight up. But when you use it, you really can use sideway kick. You also can be used inside way to kick. So different way of the kick always work. Depends opponent's leg position and how you use, how it works with you. So it's then the really, you learn this one, you only can do like this. No, you, you, you know, slightly change. Uh, you can do a little bit different. But in the form, we always keep our toe up. Okay, so this is about uh, heel kick. Uh, after heel kick, brush knee left. Here, when we do the, uh, you know, after kick, when you do the brush knee and push, the right arm, sometimes easy to make a small circle in here. I would like your right arm make a big circle to front enough. And sometimes you also feel two arms, they are fight each other. They block the way for the right arm. So I need you to do is right arm go forward, left arm rotate, one go down, one go up. Coordination is arm arrive, foot touching ground. Okay, then from here, striking out. Brush knee left, brush knee right, Repeat, punch down, okay. Punch down, I will also say this is repeat movement, okay. Uh, parry block and punch, how you punch? Waist turning punch, punching down. You still use waist turn punch. The only difference is direction different, but the method exactly same. The energy come from your feet and waist control, and the turn body send out the punch. Left arm is slightly different, but similar as brush and push. So from here, the connection movement. You do like this, move back way to bring your right arm in, and the rotate arms, this is the same as brush and push. When you move forward weights, follow body turning, arms circling, and the palm need to keep facing down, don't standing up. It's facing down. It's rounded. Okay, keep right side chest sink. Because your body open very much, very easy. You also open your, uh, you know, right arm too much. Then from here, waist turn, bend knee, punching down. After you punching out, I would like your right arm about 45 degree angle. Sometimes too straight down, forward enough. Okay, and. Uh, back leg is naturally straight. Uh, depends on your footwork. If your footwork long enough, your torso don't need lean forward very much. But if your footwork too short, how you can reach punch to the knee level, you probably need a little bit of bending for the torso, for your face can reach to knee level. Okay, so this is about punch down. Uh, after here, next, turn body chop with the fist. It is a repeat movement, but here you need to pay attention for what? Your right arm don't make circle again. Your right arm just waist turning, rotate. Okay, so waist turning, rotate, turn palm down. Sometimes I saw some people, you know, you still do this push too much, okay? Then rest the things exactly is a repeat. So this is about this section. Okay. No more question, right? I have a question from this morning. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so we were doing the lifting up from needle to sea bottom to fan through the back. Um, slightly differently with our coordination because by the time we're finished lifting, we've already stepped with the left foot. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, in the past, I was thinking of showing the lifting application by pausing without pausing <laughs> here and stepping. So now it seems when I'm doing it this way, it's very smooth and I'm not pausing without pausing <laughs> to show an application, but should I be or not? No, actually, when you're lifting up, mm -hmm. there is uh, no energy 
explosion yet. Okay. Uh, when you have energy explosion that time, uh, which is when you feel each movement, which movement can practice explosion energy, mm -hmm. generally we have a pulse there. So here actually you don't have the explosion energy yet. So here is the explosion energy point. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, sometimes even in the middle of the movements, uh, here is energy explosion point. Here is energy explosion point. Normally it is the ending posture. Here is the explosion energy point. And uh, here is the explosion. And uh, here is the explosion. So uh, you need to find that normally it's an ending posture. But uh, sometimes it's not. Okay, so uh, fan through the back. Uh, looks like here have something, but uh, here is basically just the lifting up. No explosion yet. Explosion is from this point. Okay. Uh, most of the time, ending posture is, uh, uh, is the time for you to do the explosion energy. And when you can find the explosion energy time, then you can find, before your explosion, you always need the storage energy, right? Storage explosion, this is an yin yang change. When you practice uh, more and more from your understand for each movement's technique, you can find the movement's yin yang changes. Storage to sending. Sending your storage again. So from those motions change, your practice will include more yin yang inside. And you will feel the Inside moving motion is like up, down, open, close, storage, sending, and you will feel your inside with outside are more matched together. That's why we call our martial arts it's internal martial arts. All right, so that's a practice.